One more time, shall we sing it? Hallelujah. this morning we hope others worship and praise we ask that you have honor over this worship and be pleased with the fruit of our lips and let this open the gates unto us gate of abundance gate of miracles in the name of Jesus we humble ourselves under the authority of your word this morning and so we ask that you speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. On Friday, I was privileged to uh, minister here on the altar. And um, God gave me a word for his people and for myself. Amen. Uh, the assurance of the power of his presence. And then um, when I was thinking of what to um, look at with us today, I believe the Lord will have me continue with what we started off with on Friday. So we are looking again at the power of his presence. Hallelujah. The power of his presence. You agree with me that 2023 has been an eventful year. A year full of events. Well, if you... If it's not so with you, it is with me, full of events, um, joyful events, and um, sorrowful events at times. But you see, in all, he proved himself faithful. He proved himself faithful. Your being here in the sanctuary this morning is enough evidence for you to know that God is faithful. Hallelujah. And his presence has been the one that has brought us through, that has helped us this far. And someone in the scriptures who understood the power of God's presence penned down a psalm unto God. It was a psalm that he penned down after he had a reflection over how God dealt with him. Psalm 23. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I mean, that statement came from the heart of a man who looked through his life, saw how God has brought him through, and concluded, the Lord is my shepherd. Is someone this morning concluding that in 2023, the Lord is my shepherd? Now I'm saying the Lord is my shepherd, not the Lord was my shepherd, okay? Because 2023 is not yet out. Because in the next two, three hours, the shepherd can spring surprises. In fact, the shepherd will spring surprises. Uh, before you come for watch night service, 10 p.m. today, you will have so much to recount. And then you will be wondering that, is this the way God acts? Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. This minute, the Lord is my shepherd. The minute after now, the Lord is my shepherd. Before 10 p.m., before the start of watch night service today, the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, this was a man who had a full understanding of who the Lord is. And then penned this down and said, the Lord is my shepherd. And because of that, I shall not want. Because of that, I shall not be put to shame. 
Because of that, I shall not be disgraced. Because of that, I shall not be disfavored. Because the Lord is my shepherd, the devil will not ask me, where is your God? Neighbors will not ask me, what has come out of your going to church every day? Ah, the devil will not, you know, <laughs> laugh at me. Rather, I will laugh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. I shall not want. Reading through that scripture, I've been able to break it down into three major components of the expressive power of God's presence and what God's presence can do. God's pre God is a responsible guide. His presence guides. Hallelujah. And so David said in that psalm that he led him. Hey, he make me to lie down in green pastures. He led me to still what he leads. He guides. He takes you to where the things are, where actions are. Hallelujah. And whereas we couldn't see up to today, hallelujah, he suddenly opens his eyes and then we begin to see. What you have not seen up to now and has been around you, maybe because of your insensitivity or any other thing, the Lord will open your eyes today. The guidance will open your eyes today. You will see the well that has always been there that you never knew. <laughs> you will see that which was meant for quenching of your thirst that you never knew was there. The Lord will open your eyes today because he is a responsible guardian. Hallelujah. The shepherd, an incredible protector, an incredible protector, an incredible deliverer. See, in the life of David, as a responsible guardian, David was guided when his camp was raided in 1 Samuel chapter 30. He went for an expedition before he came back. Marauders have raided his camp, taken away his wife and his children and those of his soldiers. That day, men wept like little kids, little babies. They wept until their strength was no more. Hallelujah. But then there was David who also wept, I believe, but then encouraged himself in the Lord. Would not allow the situation to overwhelm him. And he remembered that even though they've taken all, there was something the Moridas did not take. That was the effort. Hallelujah. What they couldn't take from David was the presence of God. And so David said, bring me the effort. Psalm in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 7. He said, bring me the effort. They could have taken all, but I still have the effort. Listen, in 2023, if there's any, anything the devil has stolen and taken from you, remember this, he hasn't taken God's presence in your life. Or if you had done so, you won't be in church today. You are in church today because you believe that the presence of God is with you. Hallelujah. And with the presence of God with you, everything stolen will be recovered. And not only that, much more. Somebody say much more. Look here, there is something about the presence of God. There is power behind the presence of God. In fact, the presence of God is power itself. Hallelujah. So he said, bring me the ephod, the brother ephod, and he asks, he asks for guidance. And the responsible guidance, the shepherd, gave him guidance. He said, number one, pursue. And you see, when you pursue, I will tell you what will happen after. You will overtake. Can you tell your number you will overtake in the next few hours remaining in this 2023, you will overtake. You have lagged behind from January up to now. But there's a speed coming your way this morning. I will make you to overtake in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, you will overtake. You will by no fail recover all. Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, you will recover all. That was David's experience. So when he wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, he must have remembered that encounter, how he was guided. David must have remembered also how that this incredible shepherd had been an incredible pro, uh, protector and deliverer. He must have remembered his encounter with Goliath. How that the man that everyone on the field, on the battlefield, could not match up with, he, the least of all could did not only match up with but overtook did not only match up with but overcame you are overcoming this morning uh, because of the power of his presence you are overcoming this morning 
This little boy overcame, was delivered from Goliath. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack deliverance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This wonderful shepherd is a generous provider. A generous provider. A generous provider. Look, as a deliverer, I just remember now. As a deliverer, he delivered little Judah. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20. How the little Judah faced three mighty armies. Three different nations against one little nation. And just by the power of praise that kindled the power of God's presence, they overcame the three armies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful deliverer. It will deliver you. In whatever situation you have found yourself, it will deliver you. You might fear find yourself so little and, and so helpless and so weak. Ah, in your weakness, the strength of the Lord will be made perfect. And his presence will bring about deliverance that you have never witnessed in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I heard about a servant of God where I went to do my sabbatical. Shortly after I got there, I was told about this powerful man of God, this wonderful man of God, a teacher, a wonderful ministry he has in Sokoto. I have a very good neighbor, someone who is passionate about God, Ezekiel. He quickly told me about this man. A professor friend also told me about him. And he said, we'll be having a meeting and that they would love me to be. I said, I would love to go. Now, it's at the outskirts of the city. And the only way we could get there was through a bike. And my jolly good friend, Ezekiel and I, we went on a bike to the meeting. And guess what? In that meeting, the man led us to go and plunder hell. We went to hell to plunder to take back what, I mean, it was so vivid, it was so real, that we knew that we connected that day. Hallelujah. Things the devil stole, we brought, we took back. And as that meeting was going on, I kept having this feeling, very strong, that ah, the devil will fight back. Ah, I, what I've seen in this meeting, the devil will fight back. The devil will fight back. I, I thought, but I said, the blood of Jesus is enough. Then the meeting was over and we were good to go back to our houses. Around 8 p.m. And then, of course, we we'll go back with, through a bike. And we saw this gentle aboki man. Very gentle on the bike. The bike was probably on 30 kilometers per hour. Very gentle. Not, in fact, very sensible bike man. And we were having a jolly ride. And then suddenly, the devil is a very bad devil. Mm, it's a very bad devil. But you see, no matter what imagines against you, it won't prosper. Mm, it won't. From nowhere, I, all I saw was I was rolling on the ground. Do I carry well? I was rolling on the road. And I rolled on road on road. And when I stopped, I asked myself, what just happened? I didn't see anything. All, the last thing I saw was the, I, at the inside of the bike man. Ah, what just happened? Now, the first thing that came up, this is a dual carriageway. Run for your life. Pick up your things and, so that I won't be run over by a vehicle. I picked my things and then I remembered my friend. I said, Ezekiel, Ezekiel. I saw him standing somewhere. He stood on his feet. I stood on my feet. Then the bike man, I saw him. Blood all over his head. Blood all over. In fact, I thought he was dead because the pupils had rolled up and I thought he was dead. And people were gathered around him to, re to revive him. Then I had, what was the cost of it? Then I saw one old man. It was on a bike. Apparently, he came from his side and hit us. An Igbo man. Not a bike man. I believe he used that for his, pri for his private work. And he was on the floor. Ah, I have never seen this kind of fracture before. I saw bones cut into two. I'm not saying one hanging about another. Bone completely cut into two. 
they had to spend like an hour before they could manage him into a vehicle to take him to the hospital. The other bike man, blood all over him, they managed to carry him to take him to the hospital. Ezekiel and I, we walked home. Ezekiel and I, we walked home. The devastation I saw that night, we were by right meant to be part of it. But the power of his presence says, I exempt you. God's power exempts. God's power sets you aside. Hallelujah. Covenant of, this, of exemption. Thank you, sir. The power of his presence. Sure enough to keep you. Save God. Exempt you from every ill and evil intended against you. Lose everything but never lose his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our shepherd is a responsible guidance, an incredible protector and deliverer, and a generous giver. He gives generously. He gives generously. And you know what? You, you, you know why you should rejoice when you face battles? Rejoice when you face battles because after you will recover all lost and much more. So in the case of David, much more. Much more recovered in First Samuel chapter twenty, uh, ch chapter thirty. You know, chapter thirty, he recovered all and even much more, and it was even called the da David spoil. Verse twenty, and David took all the flocks and the herds which they drove before those other cattle, and said, "This is David spoil." Can you put your name? This is Abimbola spoil. Oh, I have a spoil. I have a spoil. You know what a spoil means? A, a spoil is not just a blessing that somebody gave to you. It, it is you going to the enemy's camp and taking everything the enemy has and incorporate and converting a conversion of the he, of the of, of of the surplus, the abundance of the heathen onto you. A, a conversion, a conversion, a conversion, a translation, a transmitting. Hallelujah! Something is transmitting this morning. Yes, yes. Yes, in the direction of someone this morning. Hallelujah. I've been born spoil. So they said that they, this is David's spoil. They looked at everything. And they saw abundance. In abundance, the cattle. They are in abundance, the sheep. This is David's spoil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will receive a message this morning. Ah, the spirit of prophecy is in the house. You will receive a message this morning. I'm telling you the truth. You will receive a message this morning. The message says, this is your spoil. Uh, the message says, this is your spoil. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jehoshaphat and his army haven't faced the three armies that were against Judah and haven't routed, well, the God routed those enemies. And then they went to gather spoils. So much that they had to give a name to the place of gathering. That name was called Valley of Baraka. You know what Baraka means in Hebrew? Valley of blessing. Hallelujah. I'm saying that our shepherd is a generous provider. Don't worry whatever has been happening from the beginning of the year up to now. There is a generous provision coming your way in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 20 and 25 to 26. It says, And when Joshua and his people and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. <laughs> it was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Beraka, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the valley of Beraka unto this day. May that be your experience in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the person of the shepherd. This is the ability of the, of the shepherd. This is what the shepherd can do. Who is the shepherd? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Guess what? I have this mandate 
to announce to you this morning that that shepherd is crossing over with you to 2024. With all his goodness and his attributes as a shepherd, he's crossing over to 2024 with you and you will see him in dimension you have never seen him before in the name of Jesus. You will know him as your healer. You will know him as your sustainer, as your provider, as your help. Oh, you will know him as a partner because you will partner with him in the works of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So there is this assurance from the Lord that his presence and the power of his presence will usher you into 2024. We journey with you in 2024 and bring you to a point in 2024 where you will shout, Beraka. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I want us to look at Psalm 46 and remind ourselves again of what the God of our Lord Jesus Christ is capable of doing and have an expectation for 2024. These are things that will happen in 2024. Psalm 46, we'll read from verse 1 to 7. God is my refuge. Make it personal. God, I, I believe we should rise on our feet as we, and, 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 and read it out. God is my, one to go. God is my refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not I fear. Though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river the presence of God. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, that is me. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High, that is me. God is in the midst of my life. I shall not be moved. God shall help me. And that's right, Helly. The heathen raised, the kingdoms were moved. God uttered his voice. The earth melted. Verse 7, the last. The Lord of hosts is with me. The God of Jacob is my refuge. Selah. Hallelujah. You can have your seats. Hallelujah. The assurance for 2024. Hallelujah. The assurance for 2024. In another 10 minutes or so, please, let's be very, very attentive. You must activate that power. Oh, you must activate that power. The power does not force itself on you. God's presence will not force himself on you. You must uh, accommodate. You must be available. You must, um, you must open up to him. So you must activate the power of his presence. You must activate. And then let this be a mantra for you. Mantra for you. Something you repeatedly confess. Something you repeatedly meditate upon. Oh, when you wake up, when you're sleeping, anywhere you have, always think of these two things. Two things, two things. Let it be your mantra. Do it and don't do it. Simple. Do it and don't do it. Let that be your guiding principles. Do it and don't do it. So you must be able to recognize what to do and what not to do. Do it and don't do it. And listen, it's going to be a personal revelation unto you. Because we are all different entities in God's hand. And we all have our different dispositions. We have our different endeavors. Hallelujah. Anything you are involved in, whatever you are faced with, let it come under two items, two columns. Either the column do it or the column don't do it. Do it. What should you do? Serve God. Serve God with all your heart. Serve God. In service, blessing is commanded. In service, blessing is commanded. Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 28, quickly, let's read. That was David when he was commissioning his son to do something. And there was an express, you know, a, a, a word that came forth from him. First Chronicles 28 and verse 20. And David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of good courage and do it. Somebody said, do it. 
Now, that do it, you wouldn't be able to understand it until you read the preceding scriptures. In the preceding uh, verses, he had told his, his son how that God will want, will want him to build. Look here, in the business of the kingdom we build. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I will build my church and... Uh, Oh, at the gates of hell will not prevail. In God's kingdom, we keep building. In God's kingdom, building is happening. And you and I, we are suppliers of resources for the building. So like David instructed Solomon, the Lord is saying, I'm instructing you. Serve me by building. So yield your resources for the building of my kingdom. What has he given you? Yield it for the building of my kingdom. The platform he has given you, use that platform to build his kingdom. Allow that platform to release resources for the building of the kingdom. Resources, your talent. Resources, your time. Resources, your treasure. Resources that the Lord has endowed you with. Release. Release. Use your platform. Use your platform to bless the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Or there is a boy you will sponsor in school and the boy will speak for Jesus all over the world. Your, the story of that boy will never be told without reference to you. The heavens will always make a reference to the one that sponsored him. And took him from the rubbles. And placed him on a stead, a platform that gave an opportunity for him to have education and be able to pronounce the kingdom of God all over. I'm saying use your resources and build life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mama Kibami, be encouraged with that. Be encouraged. It's not about money. Be encouraged. Somebody will see you years to come and say, do you remember me? I can't remember you. And then the, the person will say, ah, pastor has a lot of them. <laughs> hey, pastor, kai kai. If I begin to talk about this man, let me just leave matter. Oh, Jesus, I salute God's general. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. People will see you years to come. I say, do you remember? Do you? And you say, I can't remember. Ah, you did this. You did this. You did this. And here I am. Serve. Swiss so Amis, you are serving. Uh, it's on record, though. You will have your rewards. <laughs> serve. 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 I woke up this morning. And our last child. Woken up quite early. Around five. And he served all of us. With pain because he had an, he sustained an injury yesterday and was sleeping. With that pain, he served all of us this morning. He served all of he got us prepared for church. And while coming to the church, the spirit of God spoke to me expressly. Get him a brand new handset and tell him to go to the place and touch the one he wants. He served you. Ah! This was a boy, I said, I'm not, that answer is a distraction. I don't, I, I've seen how, but this one has come expressly, without any ambiguity. And of course, the older one said, have I not done something to you? I said, wait till your turn. <laughs> wait for your turn. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, and I told them in the car, I said, this is how God works. When you least expect, he shows up. You are, you are doing it without intending for any reward to be given to you. You, are, you just love the Lord. Look, I, I am not serving because I want that. I, I just love him. I just love him. I, when, when I do some things and it's as if they meet it for you, uh, it's not me, it's just the love pushing me. Uh, if it's for the master, let it be done. And let it be done excellently and well. Hallelujah. That is what keeps pushing me. Nothing else. Nothing else. Hallelujah. Serve God. Tell your neighbor, serve God. Can you tell another neighbor of yours, serve God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So do it. What should you do? Serve God. Serve God. So David told Solomon, he said, be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed for the Lord God, even my God, will be with you. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. 
until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. So it's about the kingdom. Serve God in this kingdom using your platform. As Zerubbabel also built for the Lord. And so the word of God came also to Zerubbabel, you know, telling him that uh, his hands that had laid the foundation, that's the great chapter 4 and 9. This, the hands of Zerubbabel that have laid the foundation of this house, his hands shall also finish. Now, not the word, finish it. In David, when David was addressing Solomon, he said, do it and finish it. Yeah, he said, he's under start and he will finish it. Look at it, the business and the kingdom is start and finish. There will always be a starting point and a finishing point. And your finishing does not mean you are expiring and you are living. It is just an aspect, an aspect that has been finished and the Lord will say, go into another one. There will be no, it blocks, you know, God's service in blocks of, of, of in season, it blocks of seasons. You know, there's a season when you are in minstrel. There is a season when the Lord will say, you have had enough, come to the pulpit and begin to preach. There will be a season when the Lord will say, no, it is an international, you know, a global, you know, a, 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 a ministry I'm giving to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's in block of seasons and where you are now, do it diligently. When you are done, you will finish it and then the next work will open up for you. Hallelujah. So serve. Serve God. Jesus very early in life, was so conscious of serving his father. And he called it my father's business. Luke chapter 2 and verse 49. <laughs> he was telling his parents, how is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? You know, he said, he, he, that, that was what he, 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 he that, I mean, that was what consumed him. His father's business. And he will keep doing it. John chapter 5 and 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Very, very, I say unto you, The son can do nothing of himself, but what he said the father do. For what things soever he doeth, this also doeth the son likewise. So it's about doing. If you have not done it, you have not done it. If you are still contemplating, I will join Swiss Army's next year. I will join. If you have not joined, you have not done it. Serve God. Serve him. Serve him. What else should you do? Obey instructions. Obey instructions. Instructions will come your way 2024. Obey every instruction. If, if the heifer that David had gave instructions, God's presence, the power of his presence will give instructions. Obey instructions. You'll be led to where your place of abundance is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We remember Jesus' mother. He told the stewards, whatever I ask you to do, do it. So do, do it. Serve God, obey instructions. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't serve sin. Don't serve sin. Run away from sin. Don't serve sin. In Romans chapter 6, 16 to 23, I'll quickly read. Romans 6, 16 to 23. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. So it is possible to serve sin. It is possible to serve sin. Whatever appears as unrighteousness is sin, don't serve it. Don't bring yourself under the authority of sin in 2024. Let's read on. But God be thanked that ye were, ye were the servant of sin. So Paul was saying, what I'm talking about is what you used to be. Remember where you were before. You were like, you were servants to sin. And that is what I'm saying. Don't break. Don't bring yourself under anymore. He said, thank God the Lord delivered you, but don't go back and become a servant of sin anymore. Um, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants on, and the Lord is going to make it real. And apparent unto us all. Shall we please bow down as wherever we are. Give thanks to God for the year 2023. It's the last day, the last Sunday in the year 2023. God has been faithful. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Thank you, Father. Thank Him, Father. Thank, 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 thank you, Lord. Give thanks to your shepherd. Give thanks to your shepherd. He loves you passionately at that. Passionately, he loves you. He loves you, and he's a promise keeper. He will keep his promise, as he promised you. He will never fail. Without fail, 
without faith you will recover all. Father, thank you. I want to give opportunity to those who don't even have a relationship with him. You, you say, I don't even have a relationship with this shepherd. I'm far from him. I, I used to, but I've um, gotten away from, I've um, separated from him for a while now. And you are saying, if only I can have the opportunity of coming back. Yes, the opportunity is now. You can come back. In fact, he has been waiting for you. He has been waiting for this moment. Wherever you are, all eyes shut, all eyes bow. Just place your hand across your chest and I'll pray with you. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. You're saying, I want to reconcile with him. Put your hands across your chest and I'll pray for you. I will pray for you. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I'm watching to see if anyone is doing that so that I can pray for such a person. I can't see anyone yet. I can't see any yet. I can't see anyone in the gallery. I don't know if there's anyone of the gallery that is doing that. It's for us to pray for you. God bless you, my child. God bless you. The Lord honors your faith, all right? In the name of Jesus. You will know him by and by in Jesus' name. Any other person? Any person? I can't see anyone. So let's rise on our feet as we confess God's word together. Renew your covenant with the Lord. Tell the Lord, I enter into a new year with your power and grace and the power of your presence. I rededicate myself to serving you using the platform you have given to me. I yield myself as instrument of righteousness. I'm no longer a slave unto sin and I will never be a slave unto sin. I am a slave unto righteousness. I serve righteousness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you because you will help me through. Lift up your hands. Exalt the name of the Lord. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Oh, finally. Oh, sir. Father, thank you. Thank you. You are, you are bleeding within you. It's a deep wound. You are inflicted in your heart. Probably somebody offended you or whatever. God said, I should tell you. Not only will he heal you. Not only will he heal you. He will make all things that all circumstances around that which happened to you to turn around it will be a, a definite turn around and the wound inflicted on you will be healed there will be no scar left and it become a ministry for you father we thank you in Jesus name Let's be, on, let's be on our seat as we pray. Are you sick in the house? Ask the Lord to heal you. Wherever you are, ask the Lord to heal you. The power of his presence heals. Thank you, Father. He heals completely. Completely. Reversal of doctor's reports. Reversal of negative doctor's reports. In the house this morning, in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, you will go back and you'll be told it has happened. In the name of Jesus, I receive for you all who are in these conditions to receive this good news completely healed. In the name of Jesus, I declare reversal of ailments and illnesses. In the name of Jesus, healing in the house, perfect healing. In Jesus' name, amen.